Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I wanted to do a quick little video of something I've been asked about and I thought this was the best way to give a comparison. So I've got this as my background right now. Um, this is just one little piece that I put together. Some of you have seen it on another post. It's black foam core that I've adhered several of the faux wood painted strips to. These particular strips were all pretty much done the very same technique. It's one of the original videos that I did um, and keeping it very light. So this is kind of the result of that. And I wanted to show something that I've been asked about right now, especially because the foam core is difficult to find. Um, depending on where you live, there's been graduations, there's sign making going on for various things and it's really hard to find so I've been asked about alternatives and let me adjust this a little and one of the alternatives that I was asked about was could you use regular cardboard so I kind of wanted to go through some pros and cons of this and um show you Kind of what I found just testing that idea out. Um, so this is regular um, shipping box cardboard. I don't know. I know that some boxes are better quality. Some are not. This is just a random box. Um, no particular high quality thing. It was just a shipping box. And I wanted to show you kind of in comparison the results you get and why. I like the foam core so much. So first of all, one of the things that I want to point out is that cardboard is typically corrugated. Foam core is a solid core with this center layer being exactly what it is, foam. So a couple things I figured out about that. One, when you go to carve in to get your knot holes, it is a little more effort you get a lot more bending um, if it hit if you happen to hit one of those lines of corrugation in there it kind of makes it go astray another thing is that the foam core has like a really really thin paper coating on it on a very even surface so you typically even when it's been up you typically get a fairly smooth coverage and any deviations in the surface, any lumps, bumps, or anything like that, it's going to show up. In the foam core, it's not typically too bad. The corrugation, however, I'm going to show you. You can see where the corrugation lines. Now, you might could offset this a little bit by making sure that you cut the direction of the corrugation. But I wanted to give like a comparison of results. Now, let's be honest these aren't bad I mean they're not great they're in some ways it's almost a little cartoonish um if that's a description that makes sense um so a couple things I found one the absorption rate is different so I do feel like there could be an issue with the curling and the warping a little more with these so far they're still a little damp after painting them and I already started to notice that this one here is wanting to curve up. They're all kind of starting to curve up towards the painted surface. So that absorption is entirely different than the foam core. So the paint's going to lay different or your pigment. And I say those interchangeably because essentially that's what paint is. It's some kind of pigment that you're laying down on your surface. Um... And I, I tried a couple of different things here. Some of the same things that I usually do with the foam core to get different looks on the foam core. I did some of those same techniques here. And you can see um, quite a big difference. If you notice in these, you see grains all the way down to the finest detail. On these, when you use that same approach you get more 
of a look that's like brush strokes and not really as close to graining. So there was that. Um, the absorption, the blend is a little different where layering on the foam core, as you apply the layers of the wax, each time you apply a layer, it picks that pigment up. So you apply your first layer and you're going to get something really light towards this. Then you brush over it again and it's going to go a hair darker. So you're steadily stacking those translucent layers where on this, it all seems to absorb the layers the same. It was a little more difficult to get the darker versus the lighter. And so my thought was, okay, it's taking the wax that way. So what happens if we just dry brush? So this was using a dry brush technique with regular paint, not wax paints. And that's the result of this. This is the result of sponging it on and then using some dry brushing. And I got a little bit better here. You can see... I actually got a little of the graining texture and some more depth of color in those layers. Now, the knot holes ended up looking really nice. Okay, this was a combination of black and brown pigmented paint, like an acrylic or a chalk paint. It took more of the dry brush strokes versus blending strokes it took those strokes as you can see a little more clearly but i still see those more as strokes than i do graining and these two are a mix of trying those processes again so i wanted to show this it can be used and here's how i would suggest one you'd want to make sure you cut with the corrugation, which as you see these lines going this way, this is where it's corrugated, corrugated under that surface. Had I cut this direction, the full length, I may have had better results. Those lines were still going to show because there is a texture to that. So if I'd have cut that way, those lines longer would have kind of been able to blend in a little better with my green. Um, but I would say that you could still use these, and here's how. If you were doing a big giant wall like this, or a big project where you're using lots of pieces, and you're varying those tones um, in different shades, these would be fine to intermingle if you're doing like your, your panels. You could probably get away with intermingling these every so often between your nicer looking ones. And they're going to blend well enough that maybe you don't have to use quite as much foam core. If you've got boxes laying around, you could intermingle these two and blend them together and have more of the grainier pieces blended in. And once you start mixing in those... These don't stand out as much as not being as quality looking as these. So you could still use them and just kind of supplement them in here and there. But I wanted to show that because I've already been asked several times, well, I can't find the foam core. Can I use my cardboard boxes? Yes. You're not going to get quite the same quality results. You can see. I know that when I load these videos, the clarity is not there quite as much. But even with this, just having them side by side, I think you can tell that there is quite a bit difference in the details you can see along this versus this. Sorry, I forgot silent on my phone again. Um, but I wanted to show that for those of you trying to knock out a big project, you can, you can absolutely throw some of these in. I would not do an entire wall or something with these. Um, holiday signs. I'm so sorry. Holiday signs, fun things like that, fun projects. Absolutely, this technique is a viable option on your cardboard. A, a home decor project that you're wanting to look quality, I'm going to say maybe not, unless you're putting the better looking pieces in with it. But the same technique 
will take on the cardboard. Just, it's not, it's there. It's just not quite there. This would still be absolutely adorable for a fall sign for, I don't know, 4th of July right now coming up. All of those things, absolutely usable. Recycle those Amazon shipments, those everybody's been home and probably shopping more than they would have any other time. Use those boxes. Get get some um, get some creativity going and recycle them. I can just imagine doing this for kids that still like to play in boxes. How fun would that look? But you can still mix them both and get a great look. I just wanted to show that it, it seems ironic to debate the quality of cardboard versus cardboard or cardboard versus foam. But there are a whole lot of uses creativity wise that you could do with this. And I just kind of wanted to show a comparison before you dive in thinking, well, I'm going to supplement this and get that same result. You can supplement and try it with your cardboard. I would say when you're practicing and learning the technique, use the foam core. It's going to give you a much better result. And then go in and start playing on this and really honing your skills in. Um, because you could have fun with both. So I hope that kind of answers that question about one versus the other. I'm, I, I, I can see really fun uses for both. If I'm going to do a nice project in my house, though, I'm going to go with the foam core versus this version. Okay, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.